So it's uh, it's my pleasure uh, to be here. So thanks a lot for the organizers uh, for the invitation and the very nice uh, workshop. So um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I will only talk about something that is work in progress. So there will be some aspects of it that are not completely polished and. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, all right, so I hope the rest of the talk will go as smoothly. Uh, uh, right, uh, because my, uh, my understanding of the, of the topic is, uh, uh, is still somewhat uh, evolving, and if uh, you guys have uh, any uh, suggestions or references that you think might be helpful, I'll be very happy to, to hear them at the end uh, of the talk. Okay, so um, uh, I will talk about um, uh, some buzzword uh, uh, related to things that I hope people know quite well in, in this workshop. And uh, I will try to you know, the, make sure you understand what I'm talking about uh, as, as I go on. Right. All right, so just to fix some notations and basic objects that I'm talking about, a very lightning fast review of some, some things that, that I need. Um, so uh, I will be talking about the gauge theories. Uh, so what are gauge theories to a physicist? The gauge theory is a PDE that is variational and has certain very large infinite dimensional uh, symmetry, uh, uh, am amount of sy infinite amount of symmetries. Uh, so PDE uh, is, uh, uh, in the language that I'm interested in, is a submanifold uh, of a jet bundle where F is uh, some bundle of fields over a space-time M, it's typically of dimension uh, N. And just to be general enough from the beginning, the fields uh, could be graded, a graded manifold, uh, uh, and it, it, it also a, gra a graded super manifold. So it has gradings uh, respect to uh, some, you know, for a vector bundle over a, over a manifold, a graded vector bundle, uh, but also has uh, uh, super grading, so odd and even uh, gradings. Okay. Um, uh, I don't have time to go into this, but I think uh, people already heard about uh, the, ty the type of geometric structures you find on the infinite jet bundle uh, uh, of a vibration or, of a, or a fiber bundle. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, I think in, in the first week there was a lecture by Ian Anderson, and uh, maybe even later this week there will be lectures by um, by Krasilchik on uh, uh, specifically on go going to this uh, in more detail. All right. So, uh, what uh, uh, is important to to, to know uh, is that the drum differential on the infinite gem bundle naturally splits into two uh, parts: the vertical and the horizontal. Okay. So the horizontal differential is what basically implements taking the space-time uh, drum differential uh, on, on the field-dependent quantities. Okay, and the vertical differential is the complement to, to that. Uh, and then there's also a notion of evolutionary vector fields. So those are vector fields that are compatible with the geometric structure of the, uh, uh, of, on the infinite jump bundle, which is mostly uh, uh, all comes from this uh, so-called Cartan distribution. Uh, and uh, once we know like, about all the structure uh, and we know what the PDE is and the local symmetry of a PDE is basically is easy to define. It's an evolutionary vector field uh, that uh, preserves the PDE submanifold and also preserves the geometric structure, namely the Cartan distribution. <laughs> Can and you remind us maybe in some local coordinates, what are the evolutionary vector fields? Are only the local vertical in your notations? Uh, they are vertical, yes. So. Uh, as brief as I can be uh, for the chart here. Uh, so when, and I apologize if this is not your cup of tea, but this is the quickest way to get to it. So when you consider a transformation, that depends on the fields themselves, derivatives of the fields, and also uh, the space-time point to some as a differential uh, local expression to some finite order. So this is what uh, uh, an evolutionary vector field does for you. So this is the effect of an infinitesimal uh, change by the form. How, how, how do they look like in some adapted coordinates with fiber coordinates u alpha? And so you choose your coordinates for the for the fibers. Take derivatives of them. They become jet coordinates. 
and so on. So I'm sure you're familiar with it, so I don't want to go into more detail. <laughs> transformation of a derivative to the derivative of transformation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, why do you say that evolution of the community is DB? Uh, lead derivative of evolution with respect to evolution of fields can use can, because it preserves the genetic structure, it can use with a lead. So it's very simple. Uh, okay, so um, when uh, I'll be talking about forms on a jet bundle, and uh, I think. I will not really be concerned with vertical forms so much. So when I use the omega symbol, so I'm, uh, it's going to be bigraded with the ghost number, which is happens to, which is the name for my grading, Z grading on the on my graded uh, uh, vector bundle of fields, uh, and uh, the horizontal form degree. Okay, so if you see these gradings, that's uh, what they correspond to. Okay. Um, just a very quick note about sign conventions. Um, so I, I follow the, the, the philosophy that um, almost all formulas can be written uh, with geometric objects that are of a specific parity, because here you have often you know, odd parity, vector fields, forms, and so on. So you pick one, and then you can recover all the correct signs for the other parity by introducing formal parameters. So in case you see a formula and I don't specify how it appears for both parities. That's how you go between uh, different different parities. So you introduce formal parameters that change the parity and you move them around in the formula. Uh, and uh, so just uh, again, in case you're wondering, I will fix the convention that uh, the Lie derivative symbol itself, uh, the Lie bracket itself are, are even, while uh, the uh, uh, vertical horizontal derivatives and the uh, uh, contraction of vector fields with forms is odd, uh, and the ghost number of all of these things is, is uh, zero. Okay, very good. All right, so we need more information, as I said, when we're dealing with uh, gauge, uh, classical gauge theories. Uh, so these are variational PDEs. And of course, one has to say, you know, we're dealing with sufficiently regular ones, but these are quite mild conditions. Uh, so they have uh, a BV BRST description. It's something that a lot of people have already talked about. So again, I will just uh, quickly sketch the geometric objects that we're going to be dealing with. All right, so let's say this is the PDE that, that we want to work with. OK, it sits inside the jet bundle of the field bundle over a space time m. Now, because we're dealing with a gauge theory, so it's a, a, a theory that has a, a, a large, say, Lie algebra of, of infinitesimal symmetries uh, that acts here. And so this defines some distribution uh, on the tangent space of the PD. And uh, uh, this can be resolved in a certain sense uh, by using uh, uh, the Schwali Allenberg construction for the cohomology of the Lie algebra of these gauge symmetries. And uh, this results uh, in a certain extension of the original PD that we're working with. Uh, so we, we, we have a, a bundle over the original PD with extra coordinates, which itself uh, can be uh, lifted to uh, a, a bundle of you know, more fields over the original field bundle. And the extra fields that appear here are called ghosts. Okay, And these ghosts allow us to define a certain differential, uh, nilpotent differential called the BRST differential or the chevalier Eilenberg differential. Uh, such that going to the cohomology with respect to the differential implements taking invariant objects with respect to the gauge symmetry. Okay, and then we can go one more step, uh, the so-called uh, BV extension, where uh, we take the uh, shifted uh, cotangent bundle of the uh, of the field bundle together with ghosts, uh, and uh, this introduces. Uh, uh, anti fields. So there are no anti fields for the original fields and anti fields for the extra ghosts. So there are anti fields for everything. And the de uh, degree, the ghost degree of the anti fields is shifted by minus one to make you know, things kind of convenient. Uh, and uh, so now we mostly will be working on the infinite jet bundle of these, this BV extended field space, which has original fields, ghosts, and uh, anti fields. And for the purpose of discussion, the uh, ghosts and f original fields are grouped together and they're just called fields, as opposed to anti fields. Yeah. Uh, what's the map between uh, uh, G infinity of BV to BRST? 
This one? No, 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 the one below. This one? Yes. It's a projection. So this is a projection, and uh, this is a projection extended by its jets. You forget the jets of the new fields, you get the old jets of the old fields. Okay. So setting anti fields to zero. If you will, yes, yeah, for example. Uh, okay, so uh, this uh, shifted cotangent bundle uh, gives us uh, a possibility to define a so called uh, shifted symplectic density, which just has this formula, right? So if the I capital I is some abstract index, local index for the fields, which include the ghosts, and uh, uh, we index anti fields by the star and the opposite uh, uh, index and opposite position, you take vertical differentials, take their you know, uh, product in the, uh, in the form algebra, and you get this uh, local uh, shifted symplectic density, okay? Um, then uh, you can also, uh, so uh, based on the, the gauge symmetry that lives here, Right, you uh, you added the ghost, so you could introduce this BRST differential. The BRST differential is, is represented by a uh, cohomological vector, evolutionary vector field, right? So it's an odd vector field that uh, uh, squares to zero, uh, and uh, uh, the BV extension uh, basically extends this vector field or lifts this vector field to the the BV field bundle. Okay, and it's also nilpotent, has uh, ghost degree uh, one. Uh, this form happens to have ghost degree minus one. Uh, and the salient properties of this is that, uh, so once you define the BV differential and you act on it uh, with it on functions on this extended uh, jet bundle, a BV jet bundle, uh, in negative degrees, you get uh, no cohomology. In positive degrees, basically you, I will not tell you what the cohomology is, but you recover the cohomology of the thing that you're extending. Uh, but most importantly is that in degree zero, goes to degree zero, uh, the, B, the cohomology of uh, functions on the BV jet bundle uh, is the same as degree zero cohomology of functions on the BRST extended jet bundle uh, of on shell on the equation uh, with respect to the BRST differential. And that is the same as the gauge invariant functions on the original equation, right? So that's the main uh, thrust of this construction. Yes. Um, are you, is this an assumption that the negative ghost degrees, uh, the cohomology is zero or yes. is this not always satisfied, right? I, I guess not, but I mean, this yeah. is uh, this is out, outcome of a construction that you can find in, you know, in books and review papers under sufficient regularity conditions. And, and, but in general, in BV, also under these conditions, it's not zero, is it? But if you want, if you want to study equation, then you need causal resolution, yeah. which is correct, which yeah. doesn't happen. But that's not the causal resolution. Well, well that's not. But I mean, this is constructed using a causal resolution, and the causal resolution you start with uh, uh, no normal acyclicity in negative degrees, and you preserve it when you define a BV differential which has a causal state for us, which is and work and and the, and the corrections. So the acyclicity in negative degrees for functions is preserved under the, the usual construction of the BV differential. You, you, Thomas, you look like you don't believe me, but uh, I mean this is <laughs> this is the whole point of that of the construction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So one. Uh, so the next structure that we need to have is a so-called anti-bracket. And this is basically defined by taking uh, this uh, uh, symplectic structure, quote unquote symplectic structure, and inverting it. I'm putting inversion in quotes because what the, uh, to really invert it, you need to uh, go from jets to uh, the fun uh, space of, of sections. So to a function infinite dimensional space, you have to invert there. But the point is that uh, uh, you can uh, uh, write this, this down as a, as a local formula. So there's a local formula for this, this anti-bracket when it's defined on so-called local functionals, right? So these are horizontal forms of top degree, which you, in principle you can integrate over the, the base manifold once it's uh, uh, pulled back by the jet extension of some field. Uh, uh, and these are taken modulo the horizontal differential, right? So these are really things that uh, should be thinking of as, as integrals if they were well-defined and if they're not well-defined as actual integrals, and we think of them as cohomology classes in for the horizontal differential. Okay. Moreover, uh, the anti-bracket allows us uh, to write the um, BV differential 
as uh, as an inner form while acting on uh, other um, uh, local functionals. Uh, so that the BV differential uh, is uh, written as the action through the anti bracket of an so called extended BV extended action, which is itself a local functional, uh, so integral of some uh, some uh, representative in this homology class. Uh, and uh, the nil potency of the BV differential is related to the master equation for the, uh, uh, the BV uh, extended action, which is written here. Uh, and uh, this, uh, the anti bracket with these properties and uh, compatibility with uh, the BV differential makes the local functionals into a DGLE algebra. Okay, so again, this is just background information. Uh, and uh, once, once we have the structure, uh, we, we can, uh, uh, so we had a nice notion of symmetries here. And you know, after doing all this construction, uh, the same notion is basically captured uh, by saying that uh, a symmetry uh, is uh, now an evolutionary vector field on the BV extended jet bundle, uh, which uh, leaves the uh, BV extended action invariant in this cohomology class, namely that uh, uh, if you act with the lead derivative on the integrand uh, of the BV extended action, uh, then it's zero up to horizontally exact terms. That's what this means, okay? And it turns out that uh, these symmetries are a bit smaller space than, than that one, but all the gauge symmetries still live there, right? Because they preserve not just the equation, but this, the action as well. All right, so once again, very quickly about the conventions. So the anti-bracket uh, and the BV differential are odd, and they have a ghost number one. And uh, in case, again, you're wondering, well, though I will not really use this, uh, usually anti bracket is defined so that the, uh, uh, the oddness of it is carried by the comma. So that when you uh, move a formal parameter through the comma, that's when the sign changes. Okay, which is kind of, yes. But don't you require BV symmetries to be symplectic? Vector fields also? Uh, uh, but it's maybe, maybe right. Yeah, so. Uh, so, what, so uh, one of the things I should you know, make sure that I, <laughs> I am correct, but I think that won't, won't change very much. Uh, well, if it's inner, it's automatic, but yeah, I'm not asking it to be in or But I think maybe you're, you're right. Yes, so should should this OK. Uh, all right, now I'm moving. Uh, into the body of the talk, uh, I want to talk about L infinity algebras. So, to talk about L infinity algebras, I need to tell you what an L infinity algebra is. And I'm sure many of you have seen a definition and have probably gone away scratching your head about what unshuffles really mean. And I can tell you that you can completely ignore all those definitions and just use this one, which is completely equivalent, I think, unless you work in some positive characteristic, you know, characteristic two or three or something like that. Anyway, so. Uh, so let's say you have a uh, graded vector space, uh, which is uh, Z and Z2 graded. So this would be the ghost grading, and this would be the uh, super grading in, uh, in my e of an e even odd grading in my terminology. Uh, so uh, the L infinity algebra, uh, an L infinity algebra on this uh, graded vector space V, consists of a, a number of brackets. Uh, so these are uh, multilinear functionals. Uh, with you know different numbers of arguments, uh, and they are functionals on the the graded uh, symmetric uh, 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 tensor algebra of the this vector space. Okay, so the symmetry properties of the brackets are graded symmetric, right? So if you plug in even elements, they're symmetric. If you plug in odd elements, then they're anti-symmetric and if you need uh, mixed uh, arguments, then you, you can use this trick by introducing formal uh, parameters to change the parity to one or the other, okay? And uh, typically, uh, so the, all the brackets themselves, like I said, are uh, uh, odd, and uh, the oddness is carried by the front bracket. And if you need to change uh, so to some convention, some other convention, you can, uh, you can do it quite easily. Right, so. These brackets are not arbitrary, but they must satisfy a certain identity. 
uh, called the higher Jacobi identities. And very succinctly, they can be written in this generating functional form. Uh, what this means, so e to the b, would be some element of v is this fo you know, formal series of uh, you know, 1 plus b plus b squared and so on, symmetrized. Uh, and uh, uh, if you expand this in b, uh, so as we know, of, uh, so products of, of, of even elements, they span the entire graded symmetric space, right? So this way, if you know how to specify the action of the brackets on these elements, you know how to specify them everywhere, okay? Uh, this might look very mysterious, but if you start expanding this, uh, uh, you find that, um, well, first of all, the bracket that takes only zero arguments, just uh, the unit in this algebra gives you zero, that's part of the de definition, uh, the most common one. Uh, the unary bracket uh, uh, satisfies, uh, this, this identity uh, uh, corresponds to the unary bracket basically squaring to zero, so we will use it as a differential and we use the S symbol for, as we've been using for differentials for that. Uh, and with that notation, so the higher brackets uh, start satisfying these kinds of identities. And uh, if uh, S were zero, uh, you'd find, um, um, for example, that this, so if S is not zero, uh, uh, this basically tells you that uh, S is compatible uh, with the binary bracket, like in the DG Lie algebra case, uh, this, if S were zero, tells you that the binary bracket satisfies the Jacobi identity. If not, then the Jacobi identity is violated in some way that which is controlled by the differential. And the most general, uh, the higher order identity looks like this. And you can expand it using unshuffles if you like uh, by symmetrizing uh, over already symmetrized uh, you know, subsets of arguments. All right, so this is the main set of L infinity algebra identities. Uh, just to or let you orient yourself, a DG, DG Lie algebra is itself an L infinity algebra once you look at it the right way. And the right way to look at it is first to make sure that the algebra is, you know, is, is shifted in the right degrees. So that's just by convention, as I stated here. Uh, then uh, you take the differential, uh, the, the Lie bracket, and you put them in the unary and binary bracket uh, 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 places uh, here, and then all the other brackets are, are zero, and that's an L infinity algebra. Okay, very good. Yet another way, which is uh, uh, sometimes useful to... Zero before S. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the zero, uh, zero array. Right? So it's not formal poetry, right? Something else? Right, yes. Yeah, so there, there are the, uh, versions where this might be not zero, but I'm not considering. Normally, uh, yeah. always. Right. So dually, uh, there's an, another equivalent way to define this, uh, which is that if, if you happen to, uh, to take the, the dual of this bracket, right, so it's defined from uh, the, um, uh, from, uh, uh, right, from, from the symmetric tensor algebra to, to V, right, so you can take dual, so it would be defined from V star to uh, S of V star, right, the one sitting here. And if you extend that as a graded differential, Okay, then you, you actually get a differential graded commutative algebra, right? It's not an arbitrary one, it's a special one because the vector space is uh, free in a certain sense as a uh, 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 free polynomial uh, algebra generated on a graded vector space. And uh, was at least one reason that I want to show you, uh, show you this dual definition is that, um, I, so I've given you the structure of the BV formalism for a variational PDE, and there is already inherent there an L infinity algebra, in fact, an L infinity algebroid, right? Because I have uh, the algebra of functions on uh, the uh, jet bundle of the, the BV field bundle, and I have a differential there, okay? So this is a differential graded commutative algebra, that's true. And uh, the vector space here is almost like here, right? So it's, it's uh, functions on some space, right? So these are polynomial functions on some space. But this is a graded manifold, so part of it is a vector bundle, and smooth functions on a graded manifold are polynomial on that part, and uh, possibly non-polynomial on the rest. So if the rest was just a point, then these two uh, uh, notions were coincide. And because the base is not necessarily a point, but um, a, a manifold, so this is, in fact, defines an L infinity algebraid. But this is not the L infinity algebra uh, or L infinity structure that I will talk about. 
Right? So sometimes people talk about L infinity structures in the BV theory, and they mean this, and now it means something related to it, but not exactly that. So just pay attention. Yeah. Just to clarify, I got lost a little bit. So in this duality, so you are you talking about the standard statement that in infinity is Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is a Q-manifold. No, not necessarily formal. If it's not formal, then it's a yeah, algebra. Yeah. It's algebra. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Right. So now, now we're getting to uh, the reason why I was interested in this uh, project uh, altogether. Uh, so there's a, a very nice uh, older paper by uh, uh, Brandt and No and and Wilsch uh, from 1998 called the Extended Anti-Field Formalism. And I don't know if uh, if ever looked at this paper. But um, it's not so easy to read. But in some sense, it's uh, it's kind of deep, uh, and I've wanted to understand it for a long time. And uh, learning all the stuff about Elton algebras and so on was inspired by basically trying to make sense of what ha what's happening in that paper. So what I want to do is show you what kind of my understanding of it and how uh, you know something can evolve from that. All right. So. Um, all right, we start with a BV description of a gauge theory, as I so as I presented, uh, and uh, we are now looking at local functionals, right? So, so these are uh, these cohomology classes. Uh, so, for, uh, we want to look at at forms of certain Gauss degrees in uh, top uh, horizontal degrees, so things that we can integrate over the manifold. Okay, they look like this, um, and. Um, uh, okay, so we want to consider the cohomology of the BV differential in local functions. Okay, so this notation. Um, and right, so you can compute this cohomology. Uh, uh, let's say we pick a basis of representatives for the co-cycles, for the cohomology classes of these guys in negative ghost degree. Uh, what, what can we do with this? Well, uh, you know, these, these are things that we can take uh, anti brackets off, and that's what precisely what uh, uh, Branteno and Wilch uh, did. So, B is I'd say BHW, what BHW did. So, they took some brackets of them. All right, so they got some results. Uh, it turns out that you know you get something that looks a bit like structural constants of a Lie algebra, but then you get some corrections which are BV exact. Okay, and then you take some more anti brackets and you get you know, you know, you take anti brackets of, of, of these guys with these guys. Uh, and uh, you see some more, more structures, structural constants appearing. Yes. Maybe it's a notational issue. So you say that here the negative cohomology is zero before you, uh, non, uh, non zero. Uh, the cohomology for functions, uh -huh. scalar functions on the gen bundle was zero, but this is in local functions. So these are top horizontal degree forms, modular exact ones. So if you change the vector space where the differential acts, you can change the cohomology. So now the cohomology is different. It's just a fact of life. So different space where you compute the cohomology. Even though the but before it was what? Before it was basically it would have been uh, uh, zero here, zero forms or scalar functions. And now we are top uh, forms. Uh, I see. Not just top forms, but modulo. Yeah. Okay. okay, I see. Yeah. Okay. So they they take some more brackets and define some more identities, some more structure constants. So at, at every, and they, they keep doing this, right? They do it more and more and more and more. And at each stage where well, they discover, you know, structure constants of, you know, uh, increasing uh, number of indices and uh, they discover more co-cycle representatives. So these are all co-cycle as they're living in, you know, uh, representing cohomology classes, just that, you know, they're indexed uh, in a more complicated way. Um, so, and then they, they keep doing this, and uh, to me it seemed a little bit like like magic. Uh, but uh, they used the full power of uh, you know the the, the Digili uh, uh, algebra structure of local functionals, uh, and uh, you know after iterating these and collecting these structure functions, uh, they find that they have to satisfy these these composition identities. Uh, and if you interpret one of these f's as an n-ary bracket, right, and you translate that formula. Uh, into brackets, you get exactly the structure function, uh, the the higher Jacobi identities of an elephant algebra. So by doing some what seemed to be like magic, they recovered the structure of an elephant algebra uh, built on top of the uh, the uh, cohomology uh, of local fun local functionals in negative Gauss degree. Okay. Yes. Of any Gauss degree, or it's a given one. 
for all negative ones. Yeah? So it's important because the, the negative ones close under the integration. Right? Uh, what happens if you take all? Sorry? If you take all those degrees, what goes wrong? Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I, well, I think they, they have a different algebra structure. It's just larger. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh, but it's you can do it because they are the negative ones are closed and they're empty. Okay, so what is what actually happened here? And uh, here uh, it helps to go a bit deeper into the L infinity algebra theory. Yes. Uh, I have a silly question. The previous slide. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure. Is it clear that, that there is such a basis as a? I mean, this FABC, they are structure functions, right? So often, yeah. if you have generators of some foliation, then they are not linearly independent, right? You have generators, but but this FABC are not. They're just constants. Yeah. They are constants here? Yeah, I mean, so you just have, you have some, this is a vector space. You have, in fact, in, typically it's a finite dimensional vector space. So I see. Things, things so it's not, it's it's not a module. It's, it's not a module. No. Sorry, okay. Oh, just, I see. Yeah, so yeah. All, all the position defense has disappeared. You're just dealing with cycles, right? Uh, so all your Fs are constant. Yes. Okay. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just before. Yeah. But but if you go to if you go to <coughs> it is just near right? Yes. Not so, not but not but exactly. So so in fact, uh, yeah, it's important to note here that uh, so. The differential. So if you were if you were to, to look at the unity bracket here in cohomology, it's just zero. Right? So the differential would have been inherited from the degree differential, but you already went to the cohomology, so it's just zero. So in fact, if you look at the indices on these sums, you know, these sums go from two in this one because the one uh, index one corresponds to the, the differential, and here the differential is zero. This is a small thing. So it's kind of like minimal models in cohomological language. Okay. So uh, in uh, the of the algebras, once you know the definition, you might want to know what the morphism between them is. And again, this is where the dual definition comes in. Helpful. It's very compact to say that an L infinity morphism is basically a uh, morphism of differential graded commutative algebras, uh, right, respecting the differentials. Okay, now you undualize because we want to deal with the actual brackets. So, what does it actually mean? Well, there is, uh, 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 we can again use these generating functionals to very succinctly uh, write down what are the relations between the, uh, uh, the brackets and uh, the actual morphism. And since you know here we're looking at uh, morphism of algebras, uh, it's enough to know what this lambda lambda star is on the generators. So it's enough to know what the lambda is on you know say, uh, v2 star here going into this symmetric uh, uh, graded symmetric algebra. And when you uh, remove the star, when you undualize, you end up with lambda being a collection of you know many brackets again. So these are uh, multilinear maps from the uh, 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 so the the v1 space into v2, right? So lambda, the, there's you know one lambda that takes one argument of v1 gives you something in v2. There's another lambda that takes two arguments from v1 gives you something in v2. Three arguments from v1 goes in v2 again graded symmetric. And this is this is the interaction between the lambdas and the brackets of the two algebras, which comes from the basically commutativity of lambda with uh, D, the differentials. Uh, again, this, this is compact, but maybe not so useful. Uh, if you start expanding this, right, you get the, what you kind of expect. In the unary case, this just commutes with a differential. In the binary case, uh, you get something more complicated, uh, but uh, basically, um, uh, it's uh, again, uh, you know, this 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 is something you can recognize from, um, uh, well, so, some something that you know you could relate to uh, morphisms of DGL algebras. But uh, I just want to point out that if you go back to the formulas that you found in uh, uh, the the paper by Brunton and Wilch, where they start taking brackets and the new things that appear, you can actually associate the objects that appear in their formulas with these uh, different components of the lambda 
morphism. Uh, for example, so look at here in degree two, this guy here, right? So you got a differential in the target algebra, so this S2, acting on something which, uh, you know, uh, takes uh, uh, two elements of the original uh, vector space, which is precisely the binary part of lambda. So, v so, one v 2 are the four. What about symplectic form? You again ignore. Uh, for now, I'm ignoring it. <laughs> uh, so, so before, uh, right? So, if lambda goes from uh, uh, v1 to v2, so before our v1 uh, was basically this. This guy is a map from the cohomology to a representative. So our v1 is the small cohomology space. And V2 is a large space where it's represented by a co-cycle. Okay, so this is the idea, right? So this is, you know, it takes two cohomology classes, gives you a co-cycle representative. It's acted on by a differential in the big, in the big space. Okay, and uh, basically, so you you can compare this, and if you, there are terms missing, they're missing because on the cohomology side, on the S, on the V1 side, the differential was zero. And so that explains why the terms are missing. And if you go to second order, I mean, again, I don't have so much time, but you can compare this. You know, this is the part that has S2 and then a ternary part of lambda. You know, this is a, a, a binary bracket uh, uh, of, uh, I think it's, it's this guy here. Uh, so, uh, so the unary lambda map and the binary lambda map acted on by the bracket in the bigger algebra, right? Okay. So, Turns out that, uh, so let me go, go back to this very quickly. Turns out that the construction of Brown and Noe and Wilch basically built an L infinity algebra morphism from the cohomology, okay, with the structure constants that they constructed into the original DG Lie algebra of local functionals with the anti bracket and the BV differential as the DG Lie algebra structure. So where did this come from? Like, what's what's the theory underlying this? Well, it turns out that there is a, uh, a general the theory of so-called homotopy transfer. Uh, so you can find more uh, details and detailed statement of this in in this uh, well-known reference. Um, and it basically says that if you have uh, two DG vector spaces, right? So the V1 and V2 we're talking about, they have their own differentials, and you have a quasi-isomorphism between them. So it means it's a morphism that is uh, isomorphism on the cohomology, right? And in our case, we did because we had our cohomology with zero differential, basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, embedded as co-cycles in the original um, uh, differential graded vector space of, of forms. Okay, and if you had uh, a structure of the L infinity algebra on the target, which we did because we had a DG Lie algebra, and that's a special case. Uh, in general, what you can do is you can complete the differential on on the on the uh, uh, on the domain uh, by adding something that will make it into an elephant algebra, and that's actually precisely what the construction of uh, uh, Brandt and Neuenbosch did, right? So it's quite they didn't know any of this theory; they just kind of like went by intuition, but they managed to construct this. Um, you think they knew? Okay, I, I asked Mark last week and he claimed he didn't know, right? So <laughs> still I find this, I find this language. Maybe in some different language, but maybe in different language, but with this contracting pairs, then then you probably okay. okay. but could you explain but this, this theorem is, is, is much younger, right? Yes, that's right. So well, can I mean, know it? The, 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 there were like early instances. So yeah, but yeah. the theorem is much younger. So the general theorem, theorem is younger. younger. Yeah, but yeah. So uh, they could, couldn't have used the theorem. Is well, the, the one for like for operats. Yeah. Infinity is a special kind so of. The transfer is from eight. It's uh, special kind of. For infinity, right? And then the. Uh, uh, yeah, well, that, I think. Uh, somebody did in '93 did the L infinity case, but as a special case, and then there was a bigger theory. So the theory is younger, but. So they must might have been aware of some aspects, but not fully, uh, you know, aware of it, as far as I know. Could, could you please yeah. explain a bit what is uh, how do you build this map from S mod D H cohomology to just D H cohomology? Uh, well, you take uh, so you you that's a hypothesis, right? So you start with 
some way of representing each core cycle in the original logic. So you embed programmable? Yes. Yeah, you have All right. How am I going to represent that? So it's just a representation exactly, which yeah. gives you an infinity star. Uh, how am I doing for time? Who's the, who yeah, you still the, have 15 minutes. 15 so minutes. We started, started later. So 15 minutes. Alright, I'll do my best. Well, well, 10 and questions, but okay. questions. I have a related question. So this map is constructed or the existence is proven? Its existence is proven, right? So every time you put an iterative you equations, you need to basically say, look, okay, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. basically taking an S of this, you know that it vanishes. Yeah, that's 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 so this is that vanish, so you need to put something there, but yeah, yeah. it's usual. It is, it is there. Okay, so. But Lodi wallet is constructed, right? Sorry? The Lodi uh, wallet. Yes, yeah, it's constructed. It's constructed. But I don't understand it, so. <laughs> you have a construction. Yeah. yeah. But the, to, to be constructed, you need some extra structure, like, uh, uh, so not only an embedding of the cohomology as well, yeah. but some kind of constructing all that. Exactly. If you have that, then you have construction. Yeah. Otherwise, you have existence. But 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 in your turn, so you you evaluate S cohomology yeah. in local functionals, and yeah. then you use all of the difference here from this uh, dg to an infinity induced in cohomology. Yes, that's what that's what's happening, right? So that's the interpretation of work that was done before this terminology penetrated anywhere near the group that was actually doing the, the calculations. Just again, I think it's remarkable. Uh, okay, uh, so. Uh, don't have so much time, but I still need to tell you uh, uh, something about. So I told you about homotopy transfer. Now I need to tell you something about conserved currents and about symmetries. Okay. So the big name for this topic is uh, Noether's theorem, and there are many versions of this. Uh, but uh, the basic idea is that um, when you have a variational uh, a PD, then the local symmetries of it uh, are in some way in correspondence with conserved currents, and uh, you know the the, the art of, of, of this, this business is to precisely specify in what way. All right, so there are more classic works from the Belgian school uh, that basically answer this question quite, quite precisely. Right? So, and then one can uh, use this information to arrive at certain interpretation, which um, I, at least uh, me, I've been looking for for quite a long time and I'm, I'm slowly putting together. And uh, I hope it will be interesting to the audience as well. Okay, so uh, uh, I recall that we have this this hierarchy of of, of uh, original fields and then the added ghosts and and the anti fields, uh, and you know uh, l l let me assume that uh, there are no uh, uh, so so the topology of the space time and the field bundle is, is trivial, so there are no drum cohomology. Uh, um, uh, of of the of the space time or or the total space of the bin field bundle uh, and so on so they will not interfere with the rest of the discussion uh, okay so the it's it's um, uh, it's it's good to, uh, also to recall that the constructed BV differential right from the gauge theory that 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 we are studying uh, can be decomposed into into two parts. So it's well known. I don't have time to go to into this, but I think people know about this. <laughs> yes, but, but normally it, you have fast talk, 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 right? I'm a bit lost. Why well, you can... So so what I'm saying here is that uh, you have a, a part of the differential called the consultate part, which implements going on shell onto the equation, and then you have another part which uh, implements all shifting with respect to the gauge transmissions. So, and, uh, so I, I said that uh, if you're just here and you're on the equation with the DST ghost extensions, you have the differential there that implements taking the quotients with respect to the gauge symmetries. And when you introduce the extra anti-fields, uh, and you introduce this causal tape part of the differential, uh, usually this, the naive lift of uh, the DRC or Schiavelli-Allenberg differential does not necessarily square to zero, and you need to correct it with terms that depend on the anti-fields, but I'm just supposing that you take all these corrections together, you still get something which, uh, you know, complements the, the causal plane differential and squares to zero, and I call that the lifted DRC differential. Okay, and uh, each part can be uh, represented as a leader with respect to the corresponding cohomological vector field. But in general, the second one is not homological. Yes, yeah. Was that right? Yeah. Uh, square to zero. Only on, uh, on, the, on the total. 
Only the Comalge of the first uh -huh. one. Okay, so then I apologize a little bit. So, it, but it will square to zero on uh, once you go with your Right. So again, I said it's work in progress, and I thank you for the interaction. I think this will not really shouldn't impact anything here. Yeah. Okay. Um, now there is a way of uh, going between local forms. Uh, you know where um, we've been. Uh, you know in previous uh, slides we considered the um, the cohomology of the BV differential in local forms. Uh, there's a way to go from that to vector fields, and uh, I just showed a very quick way of how to do it. And there's a lot of uh, uh, a special case where you can do this. If the um, this local form is linear in the anti-fields, okay, well you take its coefficients, and the coefficients have the same structure as the coefficients of a vector field on the uh, BRST uh, uh, field bundle, right? So if you forget about the, the, uh, the anti-fields. Uh, and vice versa, if you have a vector field of this form, you can go on to uh, the, um, uh, you, you can construct a local form this way. And turns out uh, that uh, this allows you to give an interpretation to this uh, cohomology uh, of uh, local forms in, uh, negative uh, ghost degree as uh, vector fields uh, a, uh, which preserve uh, the equation and the uh, Chevalier-Allenberg differential on shell. Right? So you have to go through some hoops uh, and um, I, I, you have to go to these, these references and you find that you can you know, find a chain, chain of equivalences. Um, unfortunately, uh, in you know in the, the literature of this, of, of the, of this school is uh, some parts of this uh, e equivalents are not written so explicitly, and that's why I put some some of the isomorphisms here in in red because really one should you know go in and make sure that everything is 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 all right and maybe uh, I have to make sure that uh, on the BV side I'm only taking vector fields that preserve the uh, the shifted symplectic form so I apologize that that's maybe that's not included uh, but I, I believe at least morally that this this isomorphism should be correct right so. For Lagrangian solutions, iteration, yeah, under mild regularity condition. Yeah. So the interpretation, geometric interpretation of these uh, homologies, on which we constructed the infinity algebra before, is that we can, as vector spaces, the G vector spaces, we can identify them with the symmetries of the uh, uh, BRST extended equation that uh, preserve the equation and the this BRST structure. Okay. So those, that's what symmetries means. Uh, and uh, there's another, uh, well, yet another paper from, from, from these people, which is quite difficult to read, but once again, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very deep, where they uh, uh, go into some details about how, you know, what it means to, um, I mean, they, they summarize some things that are well known. Uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they recall that conserved currents uh, are uh, horizontal forms on the original equation, which now don't depend on any field, any anti-fields, any ghosts or anything, just involve the original equation, uh, which are closed on shell, right? If you take the uh, uh, horizontal drum differential of them, uh, when, when plugging in field sections that satisfy the equations, this has to be zero, right? And they exist in, in different degrees, um, but in zero ghost degree in particular, uh, they can be, uh, written uh, in terms of the cohomology of the causal tate part of the differential um, uh, in a certain way, uh, which, as you probably will see, uh, will connect to this this chain of of, of isomorphisms. Uh, and uh, on the conserved currents, they uh, uh, recall the definition of a so-called Dickey bracket, uh, which um, uh, is basically the Lagrangian analog of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the symplectic version of Noether's theorem, uh, which says that the, ch the conserved charges corresponding to symmetries through the Poisson bracket generate the symmetries themselves. Here, we don't have a Poisson bracket, but we have a substitute bracket that is defined not on everything, but just on the conserved charges or conserved currents themselves. And this is called the Dickey bracket, and uh, it uses the, uh, the uh, correspondence uh, of uh, conserved currents with uh, uh, symmetries. I don't have time to go into this, but to every current you can associate the symmetry and I can use that symmetry to take some lead derivative. And in this paper, they uh, basically showed that the, um, 
or, or I checked uh, that uh, this uh, bracket satisfies the you know the desired property of, of a Lie bracket, uh, but up to horizontal terms, uh, so it ex uh, horizontally exact terms, um, which means that the uh, uh, the cohomology classes of these conserved currents do satisfy a Lie bracket, but not necessarily the representatives. Okay, but once they get to the cohomology, right, and they have all the different brackets in them, they prove this isomorphism. So this is the simpler version where uh, on one side, you have the classical conserved currents, so on-shell currents with the Dicke bracket. On the other side, you have the uh, symmetries. Uh, so this part doesn't know anything about BRST extension or anything. This part does know about the BRST extension, which describes the gauge symmetries. Okay, so basically here, we are taking symmetries of the equation, uh, but modulo gauge symmetries. Okay. So, for example, in electrodynamics, you have in flat space you have Minkowski uh, point, uh, point carré symmetries, but also gauge transformations. Right. So, point carré uh, transformations are not gauge symmetries, but really they should be thought of as equivalence classes of a transformation plus an arbitrary gauge uh, symmetry, and you have to take equivalence classes mod gauge symmetries to recover the so-called rigid uh, or global uh, uh, Poincaré symmetries in that case. And the isomorphism, the proof of it, goes through this intermediate uh, cohomology of uh, the BV differential in local forms in degree minus one, okay? uh, where the Lie algebra structure is uh, uh, seen through the anti-bracket. Okay? And right, so this, this is kind of an ironclad theorem, but if you, and these are uh, isomorphisms of Lie algebras, right? So not just graded vector spaces of the cohomologies. But if you forget about the Lie brackets momentarily, uh, they also prove that if you look at different ghost degrees, okay? So not just minus one here, not just zero here, um, and di different uh, horizontal form degrees on the conservation law side, there is a, uh, an isomorphism of differential graded vector spaces. Okay, well, they have zero differentials, these are all cohomologies, but as vector spaces, these guys are all isomorphic. So now, we have, in some of them, uh, we have differential, we have uh, brackets, maybe L infinity structures, and we have quasi-isomorphisms. So this is a tantalizing hint that there should be some kind of homotopy transfer uh, from, from this, these guys, where uh, 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 Brandt, uh, Eno, and Wilch found an L infinity structure, two L infinity structures on classes of conserved currents and uh, symmetries, mod gauge symmetries. And I think this uh, transfer has not really been considered in literature. So this extra structure you have on currents and on symmetries. And so uh, resolving that uh, um, uh, structure is basically would be, I think, a good satisfactory conclusion to this to this project. Uh, so resolving that that, uh, uh, that 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 structure on symmetries and conserved currents. All right. So how much time do I have? I think I should probably finish soon. So can I have five minutes? <laughs> Seven minutes. Okay. Okay, all right, so because now I can tell you about some something that's just, so all of this has been reviewed so far, okay? But maybe I can tell you about something that is new and I, I hope it's new, uh, but if somebody knows otherwise, so again, please please let me know. Um, all right, so uh, the this this Lie algebra structure that, or DG Lie algebra structure that, that uh, through the, that uh, implemented through the anti-bracket that allow us to homotopy transfer uh, to the, uh, the an N L infinity structure to the cohomology uh, of these local forms. Um, uh, so it it's uh, implemented through uh, the the Lee, uh, sorry uh, through an anti the anti bracket defined on these uh, cohomology classes of of local forms with respect to the horizontal differential. Um, what if we try to lift this anti bracket to so called local anti bracket? Uh, on the forms themselves and not uh, on their cohomology classes. Actually, this is what they tried to do in this paper. And uh, so also, you know, basically what this, this is what they were doing with the Dickey bracket. They're trying to come up with a bracket on the 
conserve currents themselves and not just their cohomology classes. And in each case, they didn't succeed, unfortunately. So they could only do it up to horizontal uh, differentials. Uh, so we, we do know uh, about the um, uh, about the L infinity transfer now. So uh, may, maybe uh, uh, you know we can do this this transfer to to forms to a local bracket, but only at the price of uh, getting extra brackets. Okay. So that you know it's certainly possible. But it's uh, important to try to see what the actual bracket structure will be. Well, it turns out that if you reflect on uh, you know the the, poss the different possibilities you have of uh, uh, lifting the bracket, and you know the for example Barnage and, and all they've tried several different formulas, none of them were successful. But it turns out that if you take a combination of all of these guys, right, in this particular way. Uh, so this works for for uh, uh, top forms, uh, and you extend in a kind of obvious way to lower degree forms, and uh, for uh, you know brackets of lower degree forms where neither of them is a top form, uh, you just extend by zero. Turns out that this is a Lie bracket on the nose, so it satisfies the Jacobi identity. And uh, I have to credit, uh, you know, I didn't actually come up with this myself, but I have to credit where I found this in, in a PhD thesis of uh, a student of um, uh, Christian Blomann from uh, Max Planck, uh, uh, who actually also doesn't credit himself, he credits uh, Deligne and Fried. Uh, you go in this uh, classic review of uh, super geometry and classical field theory, and you look at this equation and you kind of stare at it. Uh, I did that. I don't. So I didn't, I didn't quite see the same formula as, as uh, Delgado did, but Delgado saw something and he checked this formula that it works for the conserved currents, or for the, the Dickey bracket case, and uh, I checked that it actually works for the local anti bracket case. Yes. Are this beta and gamma are some kind of Hamiltonian vector fields, like corrected by this theta contribution? So, what so, so the, uh, the, the uh, V gives rise to a Hamiltonian vector field through the anti bracket. It's unique? Uh, yes. Or so through the shifted, shifted symplectic form. Evolution. Yeah, evolution vector field, yes. It is it's unique. Yes. Yeah. And you can use this formula and turn out to be a Lie bracket. Great. And what about theta? Sorry? What about theta? Theta. Yeah. Oh, you, you define beta in equation, beta. which also contains theta above. You need a definition of beta. Beta so, is defined yes, uh, above, and there's also theta one forms, right? Uh, sorry, yeah, no. am, wait, am I looking above? Right above. Yeah. above. Theta. Yeah, here. Oh, this is arbitrary. All right. So, all right. So this is the, this is how it's defined. It's basically you take the euler Lagrange derivative of, of, of B, you get beta. Right. When you take the oil Lagrange derivative and you do integration by parts, you know these parts, you, these horizontal exact I mean, you just throw them away. In in this correspondence, right? Maybe they're important for other things, but here you just throw them away. Yeah. So they are of course not unique. Looks like in a cohort algebra, but you have some additional yeah, information. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I will not object. To that. Uh, okay, so. Uh, so the, the, the Jacobi identity is satisfied. Uh, you might want to check that it's uh, compatible with the differential. With the horizontal differential, it's just compatible kind of by definition. Uh, but uh, with the, uh, the BV differential, you need to work a little bit. Uh, turns out that the master equation is not quite enough to make sure that the lifted differential is uh, uh, squares to, to, uh, um, to zero. Uh, but if you correct the lifted differential in a certain way, uh, uh, which uh, is um, uh, mm, reminis reminiscent of uh, homological perturbation theory, then you can, in fact, correct it to something which squares to zero co is compatible with this. So this defines a DG Lie algebra on uh, local forms uh, uh, in, in the top degree as well as, as uh, uh, lower degrees. Okay. In uh, and this this uh, closes uh, when you uh, take brackets of uh, um, uh, local forms of, uh, 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 of of degrees bounded by a, a sum of the ghost degree and the form degree right so before we were considering 
closing the bracket uh, on uh, local functionals and negative ghost degrees. And here you have to take the sum of the ghost degree and the horizontal form degree, and it has to be less than the top dimension. Okay. All right. So I'm on my next to last slide. So this is uh, kind of a, a map of what needs to be done to uh, uh, kind of use these interpretations to uh, get some new and I think interesting result. So what we have here is a kind of uh, uh, a, a map which should be quasi-isomorphisms of uh, differential graded vector spaces. And some of them uh, are true uh, differential graded Lie algebras, okay? Uh, and other cases, uh, there is uh, homotopy transferred L infinity al algebra structures, okay? And the arrows here basically indicate, like if I take cohomology, uh, uh, then I will embed the cohomology, I should be able to embed the cohomology in the original space where it comes from uh, as, as representatives. And sometimes there's uh, subjective arrows which correspond to taking quotients with respect to some ideals, right? So basically what, what I have observed is that there's a, there's a kind of a, a master DG Lie algebra, which is uh, of these uh, local forms of bounded degree in this way, if you add the, the ghost degree and the horizontal form degree, with uh, uh, a total differential, which has the lifted BV differential and the horizontal differential, and this local anti-bracket. So this is a true DG Lie algebra. And from there, you can basically transfer that in different directions. And you can transfer it at, to the bottom rung when um, there are different cohomology spaces, so they have no differentials, but then they have, uh, so these are much smaller spaces. These are usually finite dimensional spaces. These are infinite dimensional spaces, but they are kind of uh, equivalent in the category of L infinity algebras. And the L infinity structure uh, inherited from the original DG Lie algebra structure is encoded in these higher brackets on the finite dimensional cohomology spaces. And this involves the conserved currents, where the binary bracket we know is the DQ bracket. This involves the symmetries, where uh, so local symmetries of the PD model mod gauge symmetries, where the binary bracket is the, just the Lie bracket of the vector fields, uh, or their uh, equivalence classes mod gauge. And here in the middle, you, you have the uh, cohomology of uh, local forms uh, respect to the BV differential, uh, uh, so a local function with respect to the BV differential, where uh, Barin, Cheno, and Bush have constructed their um, L infinity structure. Uh, so some of these arrows, uh, I mean, should be kind of, you know, uh, checked out in, in more detail to make sure it does what it's supposed to do. But once once that's the case, this suggests an extended version of Noether's theorem, okay, basically, uh, which uh, says that there should be uh, a uh, an L infinity algebra structure on equivalence classes of conserved currents, then an infinite L infinity algebra structure on the equivalence classes of symmetries mod gauge. Uh, and the two should be equivalent as L infinity algebras. So if you just truncate at the binary bracket, we already know that they're equivalent as Lie algebras, and that's um, the uh, statement of uh, Noether's theorem uh, for uh, from uh, Barnich and Eno. And uh, what I'm suggesting is that there should be uh, a version of that statement that extends to the higher brackets of the L infinity structure. Uh, so I think you should probably uh, and here, I just want to make a very short note, is that we've been talking about L infinity algebra structures, but this here, when you talk about form, local forms, they have a differential grade commuted product, the wedge product of forms. And uh, there is an analogous theory for uh, homotopy transfer of uh, uh, commutative, differential graded commutative algebra structures, uh, uh, which in, in this uh, transferred form would be called C infinity algebras. So, and I think that is something that nobody has yet considered. And it would be interesting to see if one can actually uh, determine what the C infinity algebra structures are for or these cohomology um, uh, spaces. Okay, so with that, I will uh, just uh, finish and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions? Have you got a vote? So maybe then I ask the third one, and that's the last one from all my participants. So about this infinity algebra.
Yeah. Do you think this higher brackets have invariant? Because naively it looks like they come from a way you embedded your. So, like in this case. So, they, they have invariant meaning uh, uh, up to L infinity automorphisms. That's, that's the key. So, this is kind of analogous to. Um, uh, sorry, I forgot the name of, of, of what, it, what it is, but um, you know, this whole topic transfer business was invented in algebraic topology. And so you take the Durham complex, the, uh, the differential graded computer algebra, and you, when you take cohomology, you can transfer onto it the structure of the C infinity algebra, as I said. Okay, which is not an L infinity, it's just a different kind of operand, if you will. And uh, I think there's a theorem that for uh, simply connected spaces, that captures the rational homotopy type of the underlying space. I forgot there's a name associated with the theorem, but this 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 theorem. So that is of course invariant information, but there are many different ways to write down the same L infinity algebra out of L infinity algebra. For instance, do you expect so this this your conjecture thing to be essential? Yeah. For instance, if I take uh, equals degree minus one, you can just yes. see the trees. Yeah. Then, the, the, then in cohomology, I get just algebra. Yes. I yes. see algebra. I don't see yes. an infinity extension. Exactly the statement here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But do you think for minus one, you do not have to be right? Or the algebra are all when uh, low, low degree symmetries uh, talk to. I, I imagine that yeah. So you you need so some kind of yeah. No, but, but, but if you have an L infinity algebra where the differential is zero, then it is just an Lie algebra with respect to the binary bracket. Like the binary sure. bracket kind of like sure, sure. doesn't see the rest of the brackets, but they're still there. 